Okay, I'm going to go through a timing example. Uh, given semi-arbitrary function with three variables a, b, and c, they go into an AND gate with a delay rise and fall of 10 nanoseconds. To describe this as the output is w1 for wire 1, and then we go into an OR gate with a delay of only 5 nanoseconds, and c comes directly in there. Okay, just to cover everything, let's make sure we know what our truth table is going to look like. We're going to describe the output F equals A and B or C. So we can make a truth table. There'd be eight entries because we have three variables, A, B, and C. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4 zeros, 4 ones. Any time that C is a 1, the whole function is going to be 1 because it's OR C. So those are easy. 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, if A and B are a, if A and B are both 1s, then we get a 1. So that happens here and here. So that's 6. Uh, should be everything then. All right, triple zeros, nothing lights up, so we only have a zero there. Zero and one and a zero there gives us a zero, because these two together anded makes a zero, or zero equals zero. <coughs> Excuse me, same thing there. Okay, so truth table's complete. I am going to set it up so that I'm going to start in this state. In other words, A, B, and C are this combination of zero, zero, one. That'll be step one of our journey. Step two will go to one, zero, one, which means only A is changing from zero to a one. That's second part. Uh, step three will jump down one, zero, from one, zero, one, only again, only one thing will change from zero to one, it'd be one, one, one. And then we'll change this last one, 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 zero. Okay, so we're going to see one, two, three, four steps in a timing diagram on the inputs and find out what happens on the outputs. Okay, so when does it happen? Uh, we've got A, B, C starting at time zero and it almost fits. All right, so each of these, uh, hopefully you can see these is 10 nanoseconds and our delay is 10 so that's going to work out and I'm 5 and you want to use a simulation if it's much more complicated than this alright after 10 nanoseconds A goes from 0 to 1 and stays there after 10, 20, 30 nanoseconds B goes from 0 to 1 and stays there and C is high initially and at 10, 20, 35 it goes low and stays there. So there's really only one, two, three transitions on the inputs. We start here, one transition, two transitions, three transitions. All right, what's the output do? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what W1 is and just to help me with my accounting, you don't always have to do this, but I'm going to write down what A and B is in real time. So without any delays, A and B can be figured out by A is a zero, B is a zero, so A and B is a zero. When A goes high, but B is still low, A and B is still a zero. One and zero is still a zero. So it's not until 10, 20, 30 when B goes high that I have A is high and B is high. That gives me a one. All right, nothing changes on A and B from that point out, so A and B in real time, without delays, looks like this. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, W1, though, is delayed by 10 nanoseconds from this instantaneous A, B inputs. So everything about wire 1 is going to be delayed by 10 nanoseconds. All right, so at the very beginning, I don't know what happened in prehistory on A and B. So for the first 10 nanoseconds, I don't know what's going on on the output. So my wire one, first 10 nanoseconds is cross-hatched or X's or wherever you're going to show that. But after 10 nanoseconds, I know that A is low, B is low, and what you'll see is I'm basically just mapping with a 10 nanosecond delay from this zero to that low, and from this zero to that low. 
and from this zero to that low. And so although my inputs have gone high at this point, it's 10 nanoseconds before my output reacts. So both inputs are high starting at 30 nanoseconds, but my output doesn't change until 40. That's a, and then it doesn't change on W1. All right, so that's everything I need to know about W1, and I want to go ahead and figure that out before I keep moving on to the next thing. All right, and the next thing is to look at the schematic and see that to figure out what happens out here, I need to know W1 and C. Well, C is going to change in real time, but W1 I've just figured out. So now I'm going to look at C and W1. All right, so if I look at W1 or C, remember using a plus sign for or, using a multiplication means and. All right, well, I don't know what W1 is, but I knew, do know that C is high. So a high input on an OR gate is always going to give me a high output. You know, this is either a 0, 1, I don't know what it is, but if this is 1, then I know the output of the OR gate is 1. So there's actually no delay in knowing what, in real time, W1 or C is. So basically at this point, the inputs this OR gate, I know what's going on. But that's W1 or C in real time, the output, F, is going to be delayed by 5 nanoseconds because I've got a 5 nanosecond delay on that OR gate. Okay, so what happens here is delayed 5 nanoseconds and then shows up here. Alright, so what do I see? So at the beginning of time, I don't know what W1 or C was before 0, so I've got a 5 nanosecond don't don't know there, an indeterminate state. After that, there's a five, basically a five nanosecond delay from this one to here, from this one to here, from this one to here. All right, and then W1 has a transition and C has a transition, but which one comes first? I always see that C transitions before W1 does. So because C goes low, and if I look at W1 or C, in real time, instantaneously, not at the output of the OR gate, but instantaneously, C is high, but W1 is low, and then C is low, and W1 is low. Right in here, the second part from 10, 20, 30 to, from 35 up to 40, C is low and W1 is low. Because them, they are both low, this OR statement says, well, the output is going to go low. It doesn't happen right here, although the inputs happen here. There's a 5 nanosecond delay and that shows up here. So for 5 nanoseconds, starting 5 nanoseconds after 35 is, becomes 40, and 5 nanoseconds after 40 becomes 45, the output goes low. Even though, looking at the truth table, that should never have happened. And I tend to set these up where I'm, I'm looking for something interesting like this to happen, this glitch, which should never have happened, uh, according to just the truth table. But taking the timing into consideration, we see it's going to happen. All right, and then, so we've taken into account this downgoing edge on C. The next thing that happens is an upgoing on W1, which causes that OR statement. So now that W1 has gone high, my OR gate goes back high again, the output of that. And it stays high, because there aren't any more transitions. Okay, so what do we see? That although, according to... Just looking at the truth table, I have this set of inputs, and I get this output, and then I have this set of inputs, and I expect this output, and I have this set of inputs, and get that, and this set of... So it should always be 1, 1, 1, 1. It should never be 0. What we see is because of the delays, and because the delay through one path is longer than the delay through another, and this is instantaneous according to this, 
I'm going to end up with this glitch, and so, you know, what I would want to do would be fix that somehow, maybe by putting a, a delay element here, a buffer that takes 10 nanoseconds to kind of square everything back up. Um, important thing, though, and I'll post this, is uh, this is how you're going to work through the delays. Um, and, one, you know, one of the finer points is to find out that the don't, the indeterminate regions, the don't knows or don't cares, don't always just add up because sometimes knowing part of what goes into a gate is enough to determine the output. So um, you have to pay attention to not just what the delay through the gate is, but at what is the logic of the gate itself. All right. Good luck on the test. <laughs>